Hello, everyone. Welcome to our webinar from Teltonica. We'll be starting our webinar in a couple of minutes. Let's just first check that you can hear us loud and clear. For this, we're going to be using the question panel. This is the panel that we will be using throughout the webinar to answer all of your questions. So please, if you can locate the question panel, and this is on the right side of your screen, and please let us know if you can hear us correctly. Also a quick reminder that this webinar will be recorded and then will be sent to your email right after the webinar. We upload all of these recordings to our YouTube channel, Epcom USA, where you can review all of these recordings right after the sessions that we have on a daily basis. Let's then uh, just locate the question panel and please let us know throughout the webinar if you have any question or comment about the products and solutions that we're gonna be reviewing. By the end of the webinar, we're gonna have a Q&A panel and where we are going to be able to answer all of your questions. Another reminder is that we do have uh, Teltonica stock already in our Miami warehouse, San Antonio and El Paso. So if you have a project coming up, please contact your sales representative. He or she will be happy to send you a quote with the latest products from Teltonica. All right, so I guess we're just going to wait another couple of minutes for everyone to join in, and then we'll be ready to start. I think now uh, we're about to get to the 8.05 time. I think now we're ready to start. So for every one of you just uh, joining in, welcome. Welcome to our Teltonica Networks 4G LTE wireless routers and use cases webinar directly from Teltonica. Our today's panelists will be Rolandas. So please uh, send us any questions throughout the webinar. Rolanda Salsunes will be our presenters for today's webinars and we'll be trying to answer all of your questions through the webinar, but at the end we'll have a Q&A in case that we haven't answered any of your questions. So now we're ready to start. Rolanda, good morning. Hello, hello, Victor. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, so thank you for the opportunity to present Teltonica products and thank you everyone for joining to listen about what we have so in short agenda will be that i will show you the teltonica routers now and also i will show you teltonica cloud management and we'll talk about teltonica operating system on the routers and also maybe we will look at some use cases you know most popular use cases where you can use the products and yeah if then we probably go to the q a and additional additional useful information if we will still have time. So uh, I just want to double check with Victor. Uh, is everything good? Do you see my slides? Do you see the video? Yes, we see your webcam. And we see the okay. slides correctly. So the audio is clear. Now we're ready. Perfect. Let's start. So um, yeah, Teltonica Networks is a company that is located in Lithuania, in Europe, uh, over here. And on my webcam, you see I'm in uh, Lithuania actually right now as well in Europe. 
So uh, yeah, we manufacture all of our devices here. We are actually a global company. So we have like maybe three manufacturing facilities in Lithuania and the rest locations are warehouses and sales uh, and technical support locations. You can see here, it's uh, it says that we are second largest provider of cellular IoT gateways um, worldwide. So, you know, this is by one of the, you know, um, inside analytical companies there's insight if you want to read you can you know just google it you'll find it and we have 21 international locations so it's quite quite a global company and we're doing business already 25 years in the world um uh, you can see here teltonica networks uh, um you know the, the the revenue last year we did as i mentioned Manufacturing facilities, uh, our in-house uh, R&D team, our support, everything, all the software and, and, and the clouds developed by us, the hardware as well, and we have uh, 400 employees and still growing. So we're capturing the market, capturing, you know, growing, releasing new products and uh, functionalities, increasing quality and so on. Um, Toronto office is not that relevant for you. For you, it's most most relevant would be that. Uh, Epcom is the distributor of uh, our products in uh, USA, so you can buy our products from Epcom. Epcom. Then the products that I want to talk about is going to be RET241, RET360, RET951, RET956, RET957, and RET958. Um, the RET 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 there is also a RET955, which is uh, kind of a smaller brother of RIT-955. We just released RIT-956 on the top of it, so it's a device that has a FirstNet certification. They are identical, just RIT-956 has additionally FirstNet. Um, yeah, so you can see, you know, more bigger the device, essentially more of the functionalities it has. Cloud management, so not to be very, you know, uh, so to speak, um, detailed here, I will actually show you separately the cloud management after we show you to the routers. So I'll show you the, the cloud management, uh, you know, I'll open it and we'll show you how it works. So I'll explain later. So uh, the routers um, itself, so you can see RT241 is our uh, one of our most compact, smallest, uh, and basic routers, but it's actually a best seller because of its simplicity and very competitive pricing. You can see MSRP of the router is $200. Uh, it's two SIM cards, uh, sorry, two Ethernet ports, one single SIM card slot, Wi-Fi, and uh, you know that's pretty much it. You know, only these three main things. Of course, the cloud management works, and there is a very strong, powerful software, Linux-based OpenWRT, uh, RT OS software. It's our our own software, and it does a lot of different things. Like it has like, VPNs, it has firewalls, very high security. Uh, you know, uh, attack prevention mechanisms, um, Modbus, uh, MQTT. Uh, and a, a lot of various different protocols it supports. So it does the job. Also, the temperature, um, the temperature resistance is a big factor. So it's minus 45 uh, Fahrenheit plus 167 Fahrenheit. So temperature range is also very big. You can put it, you know, on the sun, and it will still work. Uh, and uh, you know, as well in terms of ruggedness, it's also vibrance resistant also dust resistant it's not waterproof you will need to put it to like an enclosure if you want to use it outdoors but inside uh in, indoors is going to be still very very ruggedized and it applies to all of our routers if you look all of our routers are ruggedized so what i just described applies to all of them this one is just particularly a very small device that fits for a lot of different use cases but you can see this the, the, the the interfaces are very basic, but inside of the device, very powerful software. RT360 is essentially the same. It's just CAT6. So if the RT240 was CAT4 speed 4G, this one is CAT6, 4G CAT6. That's it. Two Ethernet ports, one SIM card slot, and Wi-Fi. That's the, a little bit bigger. Yeah. Then RT951 would be 
if you need four Ethernet ports, you can see four Ethernet ports on this one and two SIM card slots. So in case you wanna put like AT&T and Verizon SIM card or Verizon T-Mobile or an internal failover, you can do that with this device. And if you need more Ethernet ports, that, that's why you would choose the RT951. And of course, the Wi-Fi also goes with this device. Then RT956 is an uh, interesting one. So we have RT95, which is an identical device. RT956 is the same, just has a first name. So it's a CAT4 uh, LTE router, four Ethernet ports, Wi Fi, two SIM card slots, RS232, RS45, serial interfaces for industrial and legacy equipment, uh, GPS. This makes it you know, quite useful on a vehicle. IO ports, 10 of them, it's additional uh, IO ports and USB. So it's quite a lot of functionalities on one device. And, you know, typically clients, uh, you know, have, uh, you know, very big interest to order this one when they want to do some field tests. It's only $100 more expensive than RUT240, which is the cheapest one. And, you know, you can see the MSRP below how it changes. RUT95, six is uh, $300 MSRP, but you know, for such a high functionality set, I think it's really good price. And uh, yeah, first net as well. So if you want to use some for some mission critical applications or, you know, first responders uh, applications and let's say police cars, vehicles, but I'll talk about this later, but this is quite interesting. And WTX11 is good uh, because it also has some unique features and it's quite uh, powerful in terms of, uh, you know, the CPU is faster and there is more RAM on it. So it can, has more computing power, it can hold more Wi-Fi connections and has like a bit more ability to do more functionalities. For example, if you're going to be running, uh, you know, a lot of different security protocols, if you're going to turn on a lot of different you know, features on our firmware, which are by default very often turned off. If you're gonna turn on a lot of them, RTX 11 will be our best. It's gonna perform the best because it has more CPU and more RAM. So yeah, you can see on the left, CAT6, four Ethernet ports, it's gigabit speed, it's faster than the rest, uh, Wi-Fi dual band, um, dual SIM, of course, Bluetooth, GPS, and USB. So Bluetooth is a, quite a unique feature and we have some Bluetooth sensors. So as well, very interesting use case is a cold chain monitoring for, you know, trucks um, or, you know, just delivery services, for example, they have, uh, you know, temperature monitoring feature when we de you deliver sensitive goods, fresh food or medical, uh, you know, uh, vaccines or well, what, what it be, you know, medical, different medical things that needs temperatures, you know, monitored at, let's say, like zero to four degrees, and you need to monitor it, uh, you know, they have it on a record from the warehouse to the customer all the time, so your company would be sure that you didn't break any temperature barriers and uh, you delivered it safely. So that's, you use a, you use RTX 11, put it on a truck, you put uh, some Bluetooth sensors on your assets that you are delivering, or you just put, you know, just, just throw a couple of sensors in your refrigerator on the back of a truck and you know what the average temperature for the whole, you know, trip was. And this is very big use case and we're selling, you know, very big quantities. And I think, you know, if somebody is working in that space, I would say you could look into that and there might be some clients um, in that space. Then we're gonna have our 5G devices released in a couple of months. We will have samples available, I would say, in September. So, and but those will be not fully certified. So, will be uncertified samples, just samples for the testing. And we will we should have it certified with AT and T and T Mobile on quarter four, and then Verizon is going to be only next year because we take much longer. But good thing is that it's going to be very good in terms of pricing, five hundred forty dollars. Uh, per unit, RUT X50, Wi-Fi, the router, and that gateway, which is a little bit less functional, is going to be 450. So you can see, uh, router has five Ethernet ports, two SIM card slots, 
dual band Wi-Fi, GPS, and it's going to be a 5G router, but there's going to be 4G CAD 20 backfall, so it's, you know, it's backwards compatible with 4G, and it's going to be a very fast 4G CAD 20. So yeah, it's going to be a good thing. Uh, if you need speed, and you can see it's not much more expensive, $540, and if you look at the RTX 11, 407 So, you know, I would say it's a really good, but we, we need to wait for it. And then the, the gateway is essentially, you know, if something, if you if you use the RT 240, for example, right, you need 5G, then you're going to use this one. It doesn't have a Wi-Fi, but it has one SIM and one Ethernet port. Just, you know, kind of a gateway for monitoring applications, uh, just them to have machine to machine communications. Um, again, the, the table with uh, specs and uh, comparison of the pricing you can see below, but this, the logic is very simple. The more functionality is the higher the price. And uh, now jumping into the use cases, I guess, if there was any questions on the hardware, maybe we can address that. But while we are here, maybe Victor, I don't, I don't see the the Q and A chat. If there is any, we can address. If not, then we can move on to the use cases. Okay. I guess no questions, so let's move on. Smart city applications, industrial automation, vehicle connectivity, and enterprise. Four segments, roughly, that we like to kind of break it down. And, uh, you know, we can talk about each of those specifically, but, you know, we can start with smart city and you can see right away something maybe rings the bell for you. But, you know, for this, it's mostly RDT240, I would say does the job very often because it's really price competitive. You know, it, it's, uh, it has enough of features like two Ethernet ports, one single SIM, and additionally Wi-Fi if you need it. So for example, you know, you can see like uh, vending machines, kiosks, communication. So it's like primary internet because those are, you know, very often, you know, in, in a, you cannot have like a cable internet connected there. So that's why I need cellular connectivity. Digital signage is the same. Uh, very often in the locations where you don't have the access. Um, park, smart parking is uh, also a big uh, use case. We have a lot of clients who use the, the router there because again, you don't have a ability. You need to put the box and the box needs to connect to the internet, right? So we need to, and you need to monitor ability to pay for that. It's like a small POS terminal there, ability to open and close it. Maybe even the camera, you know, to read those plate license uh, numbers and, you know, yeah, and then EV charging stations or fueling systems, you know, whatever is going to be EV charging or just regular fuel stations, it's also the same thing. You know, it's a box, the POS terminal or without it, but you have a meter. You need to collect information. You need to collect. Uh, you need to communicate uh, via internet to it, and that's why you need a 4G solar connectivity, and that's probably going to be RDT to 40, because you're going to connect your like edge computing device there or whatever is it's there. A controller or something, and you just uh, connect it via Ethernet port, and then that cellular 4G uh, is going to send uh, all the information to your server, to your platform. You know, same here with the gaming, it's a casino machine, slot machine, simply. Uh, same like with the, you know, vending machines, kiosks, POS terminals, primary or failover applications could be as well uh, they are elevators again it's moving so that's not going to be able to you know very easily connect ethernet cables there that's why i need cellular um water wastewater i see clients are using rt 955 rt 956 so this is more interesting use case because you have a, probably uh you know gps you need there maybe you need to use a lot of different additional devices to connect via more ethernet ports uh, rs 242 port to the serial uh, to legacy equipment to connect them so that's interesting one and then uh, you can see uh, on uh, cctv is obvious you're going to need to have the router with more ethernet ports so it's going to be either the rt950 or rtx11 rtx11 because it's a gigabit ethernet ports and the cat 6 LTE speeds probably going to work better for the cameras. And then transport uh, 
It's a bus Wi-Fi. It's a very popular use case where you use RUT955, RUT956, or RUTX11 because you again have more Ethernet ports and more interfaces to connect your uh, devices on the on the bus. And bus has very often a lot of different devices. You know, like uh, you know those scanners for the cards, POS terminals again to pay. Uh, maybe even cameras, maybe some sensors, so, you know, to monitor the you know traffic of the people coming in or out. So it's um, very interesting as well. But about the vehicles, we can talk about this on later slides. But generally, smart city applications again could be also you know security like uh, smart homes as well, applications, fire fire alarms, things like that. Um, also, failover is a big. Uh, use case. So generally, where you don't, you know, if, if it's not like a mobility or portable uh, requirement to be portable or mobile for the equipment, uh, you would use a router, solar gateway router as a failover for the place where it already has the internet connectivity, you know, wired internet or Wi-Fi, you know, there is maybe a local router that's sharing, but you still need to have cellular connectivity for your, you know, critical mission, critical, uh, you know, equipment or procedures, you know, because you're losing money if you lose internet, you know, by the second. So this is very important. And also important is that uh, the routers are very secure. So it's a kind of a hack proof. Uh, it's important because I, you know, recently, you know, there was a good story told by one of our clients uh, that, you know, for example, step station monitoring, you know, if you don't have a good secure router, industrial automation, let's say your router is somewhere connected, you know, to uh, to monitor some, some meters or control some, uh, you know, industrial equipment. And uh, if somebody hacks the router, you know, you can just push whatever, I don't know, you know, to, to download something or, you know, to use the data and you can get a very high data bill that's why you need to secure router that's why Teltonica networks routers works because we have a lot of different security features and uh, of course you know the routers itself are very ruggedized and it's dust resistant and the vibrant resistant and it's some at some point as well are hum humidity resistant but not waterproof but anyway it's uh it's ruggedized router and you can you know just bash it and bash it's not going to break so you know it's quite reliable device and it's high functional. So, you know, for these, all of these, uh, you know, uh, solutions, again, it's whatever connects to SCADA or industrial equipment. So you can see here, you know, HVAC monitoring, building automation systems, uh, smart meters, solar panel monitoring. There is very popular use case right now, like security plus solar panel. So, you know, those trailers that you know goes with the security cameras and you know powered with the solar power and then the router is all, all over there so it's a good use case generator monitoring um as well you need a you need a router there and it's mostly the rt956 rt955 route in across all of these sections it's mostly rt956 955 956 router or rt241 rt240 so this is this is going to be you know the, the the ones that you would use across here. Vehicle connectivity is also very interesting, as I mentioned uh, earlier. The first net, uh, first net is important here because it covers the ambulances, police vehicles, and fire trucks, and then the other ones are just public applications for the vehicles. So it could be you know bus Wi-Fi, as I mentioned, taxis, uh, you know parcel and parcel you know post uh, vehicles and also maybe could be a trucks right and rv market is also big so you know um we have we see a lot of clients are using rt360 there because it's again it does the job very small powerful router quite fast and uh you know reliable and you know on a vehicle it work has a virus resistance not gonna fall down not gonna break so yeah so mostly even across these, again, RT956, RT955, RTX11 because of the GPS uh, and more RAM and more CPU power. So you can, you know, connect more Wi-Fi users on it if you're going to use the Wi-Fi. Otherwise, it's going to be just, you know, a hotspot. You can use RT240 and RT360 if you don't need other features to just have a basic internet on a vehicle. Enterprise, again, it's uh, very basic. I would say RTX 11 or RT 360 because it's just a slightly faster speed. 
uh, CAT6, and you know it's mostly used as a failover primary internet across all of these use cases and more. But yeah, so this is a uh, this is very straightforward. Then talking about uh, RMS, let me let let me open my um, give me a second. I'm gonna need to pause the. I will pause the screen sharing here and I will open my I will open my RMS on the on my web on my Google Chrome here. Okay. So here is the RMS remote management system. And it's very useful tool if you want to control all of our routers remotely. So whenever you buy routers from Epcom, you can use a serial number of the device that you received and add it here. Or when you're gonna receive, when you can when you buy it from Epcom, they can send you the you know file, Excel file with the product uh, serial number list, and you can just you know, systematize it and upload it from file here, from file. We have like a template. You need to put all those uh, serial numbers there in, in the in the format that we need here. And then you will upload the file and all of the devices will appear here that you will upload on the cloud management. And what's useful here, first, you can do bulk uh, firmware updates. You can do bulk firmware you know, configurations in bulk as well. So we save time, right? If you, for example, you have one router or you have 10 routers that you tested and you like how you perform and you have your configured firmware, you buy 100 more, you just copy the configuration and, uh, and you know, add that configuration here on, you know, on the device. So action upload uh, backup file and it's gonna push your custom configuration on those new routers, or you can do the same with the custom firmware if you have the custom firmware. So it's useful, it saves time. And it's also important factor that when you buy a device and then you add it to RMS, after you add it, it's gonna be 30 days free access. So every device, wherever, you know, anywhere you buy it, you, you would add it to the RMS it will have 30 days free RMS. So you can do the basic things, do the tests of the RMS cloud. And uh, then you, you know, you're gonna need to pay and monthly fee is uh, $2, $2 uh, per month. Or there is a five year pack, which is $30 for five years per device. So you can just pay one time 30 years uh, sorry, thirty dollars, and then five years, you will have a uh, activated uh, this device on a cloud. So you know, I will go with the thirty dollars one time fee. You pay one time, and it's like for five years, you forget about any activations or fees, and uh, you know, you are you are set. And then what you can do here again, also click on the router. You can see additional things like you know. It's, it looks here, connection type is Wi-Fi. So this device is sitting in our lab and just connected over the Wi-Fi, over on the power and the Wi-Fi. Nobody is using our ethernet ports, not, not using any SIM cards. You can see CPU usage, RAM, flash memory usage, temperature of the router. I mean, you can have more things like here, you know, for example, other metrics, uh, important things here, but you wanna, you know, configure what you wanna see. Mobile data usage, uh, Still waiting for this going to be like a curve uh, IO GPS information. You can see a location of the device on the map where it is. We can see it's one is on in Canada in our Canadian office. So yeah, this is very useful. Again, you can update uh, you know uh, each router specifically if you want. Important thing for me is the web UI uh, access and common line interface. So if you want to have like a uh, for example, look at the router, I do a configuration of the router remotely. So this device is in Canada, I'm in Lithuania, and I can just do configuration of this device remotely if I want to. Very straightforward, easy to understand, you know, just generating a link here, creating on a, clicking on the link, going to the, the, the device itself. Of course, I need to know the ID and password of the device. 
logging in. And uh, we are in the router. And of course, you can see here on the left side, this is the status. So we can see what's happening, all the regular information, what's the most important, collect uh, and know about your router. Uh, then you go to the services is most important, I would say, and network. So network will be for configuration services to activate additional services that router is supporting. So for example, you know, uh, as I mentioned, Modbus, GPS, IOs, you can configure those, USB tools. Um, yeah, VPN, of course, is an important thing, addition, few different options. And uh, in the network, you can configure again, you know, your networking part of Wi-Fi, Ethernet ports, you can configure, you can configure mobile connections, so let's say, we can see here LAN, Wi-Fi, LAN, and um, do SIM card slots and let's say if something is in a, in a SIM card slot, you can click here, you can configure, let's say, you know, a, an APN of specific uh, carrier, at and or Verizon or T-Mobile, things like that. So it's um, as well, the, the firewall, I think, is also a very interesting feature. You can configure it in a few ways. Um, we also have, I think, some uh, white listing and black listing of certain websites. So, yeah, this is this is very fun tool and very useful to have. You know, various reasons for you. Well, I like to connect remotely to the device. Yeah, this is this actually it. Then we can look at the questions. Somebody has, oh, what is this? Okay, I'll maybe show my slides. Maybe we can, have, maybe we have questions. I think Victor is out and I don't see the questions. Let's see what we can do here. We have questions would be good to answer. Maybe Benjamin, are you there? Hi, uh, yes, Roland, uh, I'm, I'm here. Yeah, I need to check if there is any questions because I don't see those uh, questions uh, in chat. Everything is okay, no questions. Oh, I know. Okay, got it. Perfect. Yeah, so I think we are pretty much done here. Also, one more thing, I maybe will share my, again, I will share my website here. I'll still have time. Maybe I will show some of the, our wiki page, which is also a very useful tool to have more information. So for example, if you look at IPX11 here, you can just write here whatever you know comes to your mind about a router, any question, but let's say IPX11 VPN, right? And you wanna find out how, how it works or what, how to configure it, so much stuff. And you just find your you know, information. IUT241 failover, for example, right? We want to find out how to do that. We can set it up here. There is, you know, all the instructions how to, you know, configure it. And if the device is on the field, you can do that as I just showed you via web UI and remote. And uh, let's do what maybe firewall, firewall. Again, very detailed explanations we have. So, you know, if you have questions, Straight away, I would recommend to go Wiki, Teltonica Network. You just Google, you know, Teltonic, Teltonica Wiki. Teltonica Wiki, and you will get the, 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 the link here, and you will be, you know, ready to, ready to use that. Again, maybe I was mentioning IoT 241. Uh, blacklisting websites. Let's see what we're gonna show us. Not much. Hmm.
web filter okay that's why we how we call it okay let's see yeah so i mean this is very basic but you you would need to use a little bit you know you'll find out how the system works and if you're interested you will find out definitely or of course you're going to need to reach out to appcom Epco engineers have direct access to our engineers and they will uh, you know very quickly give you the answer how it works how to configure something so yeah i would say this is it of course if you want to go to our website you can go again teltonicanetworks.com it's a lot of information here about each of the router we can read of course on a web on, on appcom website first but then if you need more additional information go here we have a lot of different devices that i didn't show and you don't really need to know about them because it's for outside of usa so and you know some of those devices doesn't really you know make sense but yeah we have a quite big switch portfolio as well this is possible to order full appcom if you are using switches it would be i think you know maybe worthwhile for you to look at it roughly it's uh poe switches and non-poe switches and it would be you know five ports and we have some eight port switches that's simplest way to put it most of them are gigabit ethernet ports and uh, two of them here are din real mountable like integrated din real I think this one is also with integrated dinner. So again, you know, it's ruggedized, uh, high temperature range you can see, and of course, very competitive pricing. So if you want to know the pricing, you will need to reach out to Epcom and we will give you a quote. But again, since you looked at our uh, LTE routers pricing, you must understand probably that uh, it's going to be very price competitive against the others as well. So the switches are available for you say, and you can easily you know, order that. Okay. Thank you, Access. Ronald. Yeah. We have uh, one question from uh, Fernando Beltran. Mm -hmm. uh, he's asking um, if uh, these routers uh, can be used with any GCM SIM card in any country. Uh, good question. We typically have, um, you know, the routers that are specified for a specific country. It's like, oh yes, to answer it simply, yes. But you need to you need to be careful buying the right router. We have some global routers, and we have specifically for USA. So, for example, if you buy a global SKU of let's say RUT nine five six router, right? Let's look at this. Uh, just to look at the router while we talk about it. So for example, look at RT956 or RTX11, let's open for more simplicity because we have two versions of this route. So just a second, I will open RTX11 very quickly. Maybe I will go back to RT956. So, let's say um rt 956 would be a good option you can see here so of course we have product codes and product codes has a reason because they are specified for a specific country so uh, you can see here which country it covers right so epcom has in stock the the the, the routers that works in uh, at today that works in usa but they have ability to buy from us any router that would work with any country globally so answer is shortly yes our routers works but you need to have a right router for the right country so if you have a country you need to tell appcom i need a router for that country and then we will see what's best to offer you you know to you because you know you can see here for example we have global version right it's a, it's there but global version will not work in usa because uh it needs to be certified on USA uh, bands. And, you know, the global module doesn't have all the bands for the North America. So we cannot certify it for North America. So that's why we needed to have like a separate school, right? But if you need anywhere else outside of USA, you can buy a global version, it, it will work. Here as well, 
on our wiki page you can see all of the certificates if you have any questions if you have any doubts that that router might not work somewhere let's say like uh, apec or americas uh, maybe brazil anatel certificate right is there ecuador is there uh, mexico is there so again you look here certificate you look at the router bam it looks like we have it you can click on this and you will see certificate is there and then you know you need to reach out for the right product code that will um, be working in that country so it's a little bit you need to be more careful not to be you know buying a, you know a router that might not have a right uh, feature set for that country the the, the not right uh, you know lte module for example so yeah thank you Ronelas. we have another question from uh Fernando Beltran as well. So uh, he said that if uh, Epcom uh, carry uh, stock, yes, Fernando, we have a uh, stock of a uh, few models. And also if you have uh, some special or you need a special model from uh, Teltonica, we can order directly from, from them. Yeah, and lead time would be very quick. You know, we can make it like within four weeks, any, any model you want, like any location in the world, it's going to be four weeks and you're going to get that router. Okay. Uh, I think we are done. Thank you everyone for joining us. Thank you to Rolandas to help us to uh, uh, do this webinar. Uh, please let us know any DAP. Please let us know uh, your projects and uh please contact your sales reps and engineer epcom engineering and also of course you can contact us with uh ronaldos as well ronaldos thank you something that you want to add it no all good thank you very much everyone for your time and for the questions and i hope it was useful and yeah reach out to epcom if you have any additional questions after the webinar you can send i guess emails i will reply later if you have any additional but yeah Thank you, Ronaldos. So we're gonna chart this webinar by email. Please uh, uh, be in contact and let us know any any issue or any doubt about tech, Tectonica products. Thank you, everyone. See you next time. Perfect. Thank you. Have a good day. Bye bye.